Good morning and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Clover. I'm Steven Steiner, the hostess with the mostess, and I uh, am a YPA and I cover Clinton, Caldwell, and DeKalb counties. And today my guest is Carly Shuey. She is a member of the Gower Dynamites in Clinton County. Good morning, Carly. How are you? Good. How are you? I am doing well. Uh, <clears throat> I have to say this uh being isolated as someone who doesn't like to get out, it's actually kind of getting to me now. Yeah, I don't like to stay in my house all day. Yeah, it, it gets rough, and then we're working from home. So if the weather's nice, I may just go sit outside and look like a weirdo with, like, a laptop set up out there. Yep. And... Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, how long have you been a 4-H member? Oh, heck. Um... I think seven or eight years. I started the summer going into my fourth grade year. So it's been, it's been a long time. I've been 4-H. But because, yeah, I'm a sophomore now. So it'd be like seven or eight years that I've been in 4-H. And it was just, I don't know. It doesn't feel that long, but it's been that long, sadly. So what are, what are your favorite projects to do in 4-H? My favorite project by far is the pigs um that's kind of what my main goal is or project to do and um following that it's probably my leadership project that I take as I'm in the Clinton County leadership group it's just something that adds on in there every year so those are probably my two top favorite ones and then my first year I had like six projects and then I'm always dialed it down from there because that was a lot to do as a fourth grader and now since I'm busier, I like to dial it back and not do as much. So yeah, pigs by far would be my favorite one for that. So do you own them and you just feed and water them? Do you show them? What all do you do with them? So when I first started um, about five, five years ago, um, we did a pharaoh to finish and we would raise and then show and then what we couldn't show or what didn't do well for the shows, we sold as feeder pigs. and um, me and my brother did that and then he graduated and went to college and so it was all me and we've always bred during the winter time and had farrowed out and stuff and uh, this year we got uh, just a new bloodline of our animals and got out of the Berkshires and just went to the crossbreds and so that was a big game changer not to have the same bloodline that we've had for the past six years and stuff and so that's just what we do. We farrow in the winter and then go to different shows in the spring and summer and hit up the state fair. And we've gone to the American Royal the past couple of years and shown there. And that's been a cool experience to see and then come back from the Royal and do it all over again. So how many head do you guys own? We, our biggest that we've had between my brother and I is four. And that was last year when um, it was all me and he was gone off to college. I did not like that whatsoever. But right now, um, this past winter, we I only did one uh, cross guilt and that was a whole different experience to say the least. And um, right now I have two, well, one, two, kind of how do you look at it. And just to start this show season off with, and I don't ever like to go super big. I've seen how one kid can have so many pigs and how it goes and just the downsides of it all but so I like to keep small and just kind of focus on one or two animals at a time and go from there. So now have you always had pigs or did you start uh, your this operation within 4-H or? So I when I first joined 4-H I did not have any livestock. I've always grown up around the livestock. Both grandparents have raised cattle and pigs and different things over the years and um, but I was more the arts and crafts, child development kid. And then my brother got an FFA and he started showing pigs. And so I thought it looked really cool. And I was like, let's do that. So we did pigs. And then one year I went to walk up club lambs and I showed lambs for them. And that was a whole nother experience. Renetta and Doug are, they're cool. And I learned a lot from that, but it wasn't for me. And somehow I always end up back in the show in the, or the sheep industry every year, it seems like helping them out and at different shows. And so we just, it's kind of a thing like you join and then you see like your friends doing it and you're like, that's really cool. And that's a big thing for each I like. And that's how it got me into pigs because I knew kids that did it and my brother did it. So it's just a whole nother thing to focus on. 
that's cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. So, okay. You've talked about your favorites. So what's one project from the start to where you are now that someone who doesn't know you, uh, didn't know you took, or you did it only for a year. You might've had fun, didn't stick with it, or it does anything stick out to you? Oh, um, golf. A lot of people don't know that I golf and I'm on the high school golf team. And I always tell people when they ask me, they're like, are you good at golf? And I'm like, well, like I'm more of a happy Gilmore golfer. If you see me out on the golf course, that's how I am. That's what I tell people. And they always seem to laugh. And um, so that's just a project that's like not a lot of people think like, you know, I do and stuff. And it's cool. I like golfing. I'm going golfing this week. So um, it's just it's something that people just kind of like turn their heads out and be like, wait, what? You golf? So I think it's kind of funny. That's interesting. I, yeah, I wouldn't have picked that one either. <laughs> uh, and you were a 4-H camp counselor and have been in the past. So how many years did you go to 4-H camp? Oh, boy. Um, I think I had five years as a counselor, or a camper. And then last year I was a counselor. And this year, um, if we have it, I'll be a counselor as well. What's that experience like? So as a camper, my first year, um, I went with, my cabin was like half of our club. So it was really cool to be a first year and a lot of my friends. And, but that year was, it was crazy. It stormed super bad and it was kind of like a lot for a little fourth grader and stuff. And then that year I just fell in love and um, I've gone every year since. It's kind of like the highlight of my summer. I do a lot during my summer, but like 4-H camp is the highlight. And as a camper, it was really cool. It was really cool to like see friends that you grew up with, like hang out with just you guys for a week. And, or my scary, the scary thing is you have friends that are campers and then the next year they're a counselor. And it's just like, whoa, you're in charge of me now. And that's, but that's cool too. And I, I just like that part of it. And camp is just super fun. It, I never knew that I liked canoeing until I went to 4-H camp. And I'm like, okay, this is really cool. Can we do this every weekend in the summertime? And, it's just a whole nother experience and you get to meet kids from all over the region and it's just it's really cool to go to camp and stuff and then as a counselor it was just it was a whole different ballpark it seemed like and it was cool to be in charge of a group of kids it's kind of overwhelming at times but there's other counselors there and staff that will help you out and everything and so 4-H camp is just it's I mean it's nothing to stress or whatever it's just another like week in the summertime to hang out with your friends get some 4-H community service done and different things and it's really cool too because they can help you out um, something that we do at camp it might um, go back to a project that you're taking that 4-H year and so that's another cool thing that I think is really cool that the 4-H does. Oh, you talked about having a camper that you were, um, you were in 4-H camp with moving to a counselor and just the change that, that 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 had as they moved into the leadership role and you were still a camper. So when you moved into the leadership role yourself, did you take your experiences that you had with the opposite view and then apply that and make changes? Or did you just go on business as usual and didn't think about it? Um, a little bit of both. I kind of reflect like what I thought when I was a camper, like, oh, that was like, why do we do that sort of thing? And so I kind of like, if I could fix it, I could, I fixed it or I'd be like, Hey, like, this is the rule. Like you can't do that sort of thing. And there's just a little bit of both. You know, we had to follow the rules, but at the same time, you know, you could always be like, okay, that one year when I was a camper, maybe that counselor was a little too strict. Let's be a little relaxed with this group of kids. Like they're good and stuff. And that was a major thing this year. And that was, it was just kind of cool to just kind of not make your own rules, but just kind of reflect and change things that you thought as a camper and you're like well, I'm not gonna do that as a counselor sort of thing and like on the first night that the campers come we make the cabin rules and every year it's kind of cool to see what different cabins have as their rules and stuff and so that's something that we kind of reflected on like as a camper we were like okay we really needed this rule and so as a count you made that rule so that was just that was kind of cool to look at and just you reflected I did what I did as a camper to change as a counselor. Interesting. But yeah, that's good to know. We, as staff, we have a different perspective on things. So it's interesting yeah. to get the, you know, feedback from, from, from camp, camp, campers and counselors as well. So 
what is the uh, counselor selection process like? Walk us through that. So I think in about February, March, maybe they send out a uh, application. It's like a page, two pages. You fill that out, you send it back in, and then they have a counselor workshop and all the counselors that applied will go to this workshop and the staff in the region will look over them and kind of like watch them and you do different um, team building exercises and different things and I didn't get to go this past year because of the flu and we had to litter baby pigs that same weekend but I went to it I guess last last year to yeah and it was pretty cool and you just got to see your friends and I wanted to be counselors with you and you just got a bigger perspective of who was running for the counselor spots and you got to plan uh, the theme for camp and to kind of make a shirt design and so that was really cool that we just kind of got to pick that and so that's what you do there and then you wait um, a few weeks and Sean um, and Chillicothe sends out an email of who gets it and stuff and then you just go from there and then go to camp and have a little meeting and you start camp off on that Monday when the campers show up. So when you go through the process, how do you like that? Is it uh, the activities challenging and engaging? What are, what are they like? Um, I don't think it's challenging at all. I think it's just, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's good that we have team building exercises so you can kind of get to know each other better and stuff and I know the year that I went um, because of those team building I met friends and um, I gained relationships with other uh, 4-H members that wanted to be counselors and that was pretty cool and everything and it was just I, I don't know I think anytime you get a chance for team building you should take it or if you're at an event and there's a team building engage in that and just go join because you'll learn a lot and those friendships in 4-H it's just you won't ever break those I think they're just it's always something to have your school friends and your 4-H friends I think but yeah it's not it's just a big like engage deal and everything and that's what I think I like about the counselor selection workshop and different things that go into the process of being a 4-H camp counselor. So do you think about anything? Do you have a strategy? Because like this year, and I know you were sick, so you weren't able to be there. They had, there was 33 girls that uh, signed up to be uh, camp counselor. So there's going to be some that don't make it and that's going to be tough. So, you know, did you have, when you went through your process and it wasn't near as many, uh, we still had a good selection, but um, did you have any way that you attacked the day or just went with it? No, I just, I kind of showed up and, you know, I just was myself and we just went on through the day and uh, I was more comfortable um, as growing up in the 4-H, Northwest 4-H region. I knew a lot of the staff and I knew a lot of the kids. And so it's just kind of show up, be yourself, just like any other 4-H event. And I kind of took it on as the 4-H energizer. You're just there and you go through the different workshops and different things and they're just there to see you and just how to kind of you present yourself and how you work with the team building and everything. And so I was just, uh, to me, it was just another day, but just 4-H people were there. And so that's just how I took it on as. Do you have any advice for someone who after this year at camp is a camper right now and then, or there maybe haven't been a counselor in the past, but they're gonna go through the counselor selection process on how to handle that? Yeah, just always go for it. Um, there's nothing wrong with just going for it. And then when you go to the counselor workshop, just be yourself and just act like it's another day. And it's just, you know, 4-H staff's there. And I'm sure that you'll know somebody, even if it's your county staff or um, your friend that's being a counselor or whatever, just, just take it on as another day. And that's just how I look at it. And that's what I should, I mean, that's what anybody should look at it as. And so for the kids that want to be a camp counselor, that's just take it on as another day, be yourself type of person. And 4-H is all about, you know, being yourself and embracing yourself. And so just do that. And I think you'll do great and just see how, what the outcome is of it all. And just move on. So what is your favorite part of camp? My favorite part of camp is probably the dances. Um, 
as most people who know me know about every year for H camp, I end up in like a wheelchair or on a bench, like icing my ankle and stuff. And but I still, I love the dances. Um, last year there, I taught some kids how to, you know, like two step swing dance. That was really fun to do. And the line dances is really cool. And um, that's just my favorite part of camp by far is the dances and it doesn't matter if it's 100 degrees or if it's raining out we're still like can this is a dance can we have a dance and that's just that's my favorite part of camp and I just like to have other kids be that um, the dance is their favorite too and as a counselor last year we had to like bring in the kids who just sit on the picnic tables or whatever we're like this is camp like let yourself just be like have fun like let's do go do the cotton eye joe like different things and that's by far my favorite part and when the little kids are out there little eight-year-olds and they're like and it's just a little eight-year-old girl and they're like I don't want to go dance with that boy they're you guys are just friends like come on like they don't have cooties just dance with them sort of thing and that's how I look at it and that's why I tell my campers I'm like okay listen we're not gonna make fun of you just go for it and they're just like are you serious and so that's by far my favorite part of camp is the dances that we have yeah, last year you didn't get injured, did you? Uh, I don't think I did. That's the first time in a long time. A long I remember time. I had to push you up the hill in the wheelchair. Yeah. Your mom had to come get you. And... In the middle of the thunderstorm, yeah. Yeah, that was that was good times. Super. <laughs> okay, so with all the things that's going on right now in the world, how has your life changed and you know, in regards to school and all st and stuff like that. Oh boy. So we, it was kind of crazy because when it all like hit and schools were closing, we had that Monday off actually. And a lot of schools around us were closing and we're like, okay, are we going to close and stuff? And we ended up closing for the week and um, they just kind of, it was a week for teachers just to get stuff in order and everything. And so it was just like okay like this week is easy it's like gonna be our spring break because our school didn't really get a spring break this year and then last week was our first week of school work and on monday they assigned everything to us and then we just did it on our computers and i'm lucky enough to have high speed internet and everything and a bigger laptop than my school laptop and so i just got it all knocked out in one day and just kind of moved on and it's kind of it's different because you're at home and your teacher isn't there but at the same time a lot of our schoolwork is actually on our computers so it's just i mean a different background than it is traveling to school and doing it there with your teachers and the teachers are really um good about explaining things and they make videos which i think is hilarious like our kim teacher him making a video of him trying to teach us i don't know i just think it's hilarious to see that happen but I don't know. It's just, you have to change and kids don't get to play their spring sports. But I mean, as long as we can get the virus out of the world, that's all that matters. So where does 4-H fall when you're going through all this stuff and you got all those changes in school where it's moving online and stuff? Um, so some 4-H events got canceled and that kind of stinks, but I'd rather be safe than you know, be, have the virus or have other kids have it and stuff. And um, I know, I think state Congress, I don't know if it's got canceled or they're in the process of that, but that's something I go to every year. And um, I haven't signed up for that just because of, I don't know how, what the outcome's gonna look like, but um, none of my 4-H events have got canceled, but I know um, some other kids, their stuff's uh, been canceled or they've done it over Zoom. And so that's kind of, but they can still make it um, virtual and different things. And, um, that's how I know a lot of organizations are doing their stuff. And so it's just, it hasn't really affected me yet, but I'm sure it will sometime in the near future. Yeah, and we'll have a uh, Clinton County 4-H Council meeting uh, tomorrow night. So yep. that'll be the first time we'll have a, a Zoom 4-H Council meeting and yep. figure that deal out. Uh, so what have you done is in regards to uh, your 4-H project with your pigs. Are you still purchasing them or are you just taking a wait and, you know, I mean, C approach, maybe not go for a barrel and, and go for something else or what, what are you thinking there? 
So this year was crazy. So um, in years past, you know, you always have your rough years and your good years. And this year was a little bit of a rough year. And out of the litter that I had, I ended up only having two pigs um, survive. And out of, oh, I think she had 12, maybe, maybe that's right, maybe 12. And so that's kind of a crazy number to have only two survive. And they stayed strong for about a week, and which was a lot longer than what I thought. And then those two little piglets ended up going. So at that time, I was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do now? Like, I have no pigs, you know, and, you know, we're going to sell these jackpot shows and stuff. And so I was kind of freaking out. And um, luckily, the guy that I work with, he's really, he's a nice guy. And he kind of saved me there. And he went, he knew some people who were selling some pigs. And so he drove and he got me a Burke Barrow, which I had mixed feelings about because I hate the Berkshire breed. I've raised Berkshires for five years. And as soon as RP went to K-State, I got rid of the Berkshires. RP, who's uh, RP? Uh, RP is my brother. And he's at K-State right now. And Well, he's home right now, but he goes to K-State. And so as soon as he left, I got rid of the Berkshire um, bloodline and everything. And I was, said, see you later. But here I am back with the Berkshire. And um, so on the cross um, or on the guilt side of things, um, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And back to the guy who I kind of run with right now, he was super cool and we're kind of looking at a guilt and we don't know what breed we're going to go with yet, but we'll find something that will fit what I need and everything. And it's just, I've done this before in years past where a farrowing hasn't gone right. And uh, you just kind of look, look around and be like, oh, what are we going to do now sort of thing. And, but luckily Kevin's there and he helps me out and he's really nice about it. And he, I mean, I'm grateful for him and, or else I'd be, who knows, but it's really cool that he can hook me up with some pigs and we have a show season like years past. So are your num are your summers usually dedicated to 4-H camp and then uh, hitting a lot of shows? Do you do a lot of county fairs, jackpot shows, or just county fairs, or how does your summers go? So when I first started, um, our school has a school farm, and that's where we put our pigs. It was just more convenient for us. Um, instead of driving the seven minutes out to my grandparents' farm or the 20 minutes to Searchville to my dad's side. And so that's just where we had our animals. And with the school farm, we hit up um, a lot of county fairs. And um, then we go, we kind of take July off because it's just so hot and everything. And, and then we go to the state fair. And then you're just kind of, and then we hit up the Andrew Buchanan, Clinton, the Cab County show. Um, after the state fair, and then we're just kind of done. And then one year, uh, my brother and me and a friend of ours, we hooked up um, to my brother's pickup truck, this old rusty cattle trailer. That was my grandpa's. And it's like, it's not meant for show pigs whatsoever, but it worked for us. We were, we would show up to shows and they'd be like, oh my gosh, what, who are these people? But it was kind of cool. We always did get at those shows and then we'd walk back to our like trailer that was just like oh my goodness and that's just to me it doesn't matter like the kind of trailer you have or whatever it this it, it matters what's in the trailer sort of thing and that's just what I go by and and that year we hit up every single county fair that there seemed to be in northwest Missouri and I remember one morning we left at 5 a.m and went to Carrollton and showed and came back in the blistering heat and that was it was the fun times we saw we had friends over there and that's kind of why we went and it was just it was a whole different thing you went to a you know instead of going to savannah we went to Carrollton. it was just a whole different set of people and it was kind of cool to just look at and, um that year we hit up a lot and we hit up some jackpot shows and that's when i was shoved lambs and went running with doug and ernetta we went to a lot of jackpot shows that's what they do and just what I did I followed them and with my three lambs I had that year and we'd leave on a Friday and pull up and we'd unload and we'd start showing sheep and leave that, that Saturday night and go to a different show on Sunday and it was a lot of running around it was good times that was had 
memories made and everything. And then this past year, I had a really good cross guilt. And so I had the opportunity to go to some more jackpot shows um, with some people that I knew. And so we kind of hit those and the, hit the county fairs back with the school farm. And then the cross guilt that I had, um, I brought it back to the guy I bought it from and we bred it there. So from there, I just, I kind of moved away from the school farm and I'm there now um, at the guy I purchased the guilt from. And depending on what happens with the coronavirus, we might do virtual shows or if the shows are still out there. We'll hit those shows, different things. So it's just a little bit of everything, jackpots and um, national shows and county fairs and the state fair, of course. So it's just, I don't know, to me, I've been, I felt like I've been everywhere and just seen different backgrounds of how different shows run. So that's what I do. And I know different people have different things that they go to and stuff, and, but that's just how I run. So do you participate in contest day? Do you do speeches and demonstrations? Do you have projects that you bring for uh, project judging? Do you do all that stuff or just yes. stick to the livestock? Um, so I'm a big public speaker and right now I might not seem like that. I've never used this. So it's kind of interesting. It's a whole different thing. And um, but I'm a big public speaker. And so I've always public spoke through 4-H and then uh, uh, some through FFA. And um, for contest day um, this year, I did a public, uh, I did public speaking. I did a presentation over my virtual trip to Europe. And that was pretty cool. I really like that. And then Usually I do a demonstration and uh, public speaking, but this year I didn't have the time to come up with the demonstration and stuff. And so I just did the public speaking. And then for exhibit day, I just, whatever projects I'm enrolled in, I'll um, make something or do something with those projects and bring them to exhibit day. Um, this past year, gosh, what I do? For veterinary science, I made a diagram, uh, oh yeah, a diagram of different livestock and did the anatomy of it and so that's what I brought for veterinary science um, I don't remember what my other ones were but it's just different things and I always tie it back into um, what my projects are and just sometimes a lot of the times I make the projects to help me out um, and stuff so it's just kind of like kill two birds with one stone type of thing and that's just what what I do and so I, I participate in a lot of 4-H stuff and just because, I don't know, it's just always there and 4-H is just really cool. And so I just, I just do it. So you talked about 4-H being cool and you've talked about being an FFA. Why both? Because that's one thing that we struggle with as um, in each county in Missouri is kids, you know, doing one or the other. Why did you choose both? And why have you stuck with 4-H? Oh, so a lot of reasons. The other reason I joined FFA was when I showed Lambs, um, Renetta was the part-time, or she is the part-time ag teacher, and so she was one of the reasons I just was like, heck, let's win, you know, and um, my brother had been in FFA, and so I knew the ag teachers, and I knew how it ran and everything, and um, you know, I new kids who did both and they succeeded in both so I was like you know what let's join and so that's why I joined and with me being on the school farm at middle school um, that was another kind of stepping stone to be in the FFA and it's I've struggled a little bit with balancing them both out but um, I know I've had to miss um, FFA officer trainings for 4-H events and but at the same time uh, my advisor was like you're going to be learning the same thing at these 4-H events that uh, you would at this officer training. And so I really like that, how it just kind of balanced it both out and stuff. And but I, and so my advisor was really cool and laid back with that idea and stuff. And so it's just, you got to pick kind of what's most important at that time. And to me, it was the 4-H event that I had signed up for and was more important than this officer training to me and stuff. And I was gonna learn the same, if not more, and everything. So it's just how things worked out. And that's just how I, I mean, I don't know, they piggyback each other a lot. And so it's kind of, it's easier to um, balance it out, but that's just how I go with it. 
so you've talked about state congress and you've talked about state fair and stuff like that and that's one thing we encourage kids is to go beyond the county level and you know regional energizer and stuff like that hey that's even better but we encourage them going to do uh to do participate in the state projects what are or state events what are some state events that you have done how do you like them and you know have you went back so my first state event was probably the state shooting sports um down in columbia and that was really cool um, it was really hot because it's in August and then there's another one in September. But that's what I did. I did that for a few years and then I got out of shooting sports. And, um, and then my next uh, state event was teen conference. That was really cool. Uh, if you're in that age range, definitely go. I'm president of our 4-H club and I told all my kids that were in that age range to go, go enjoy it. Um, it's a whole nother experience, something that's really cool. And I've always gone um, as long as I've been eligible. eligible, And that's just, it's really cool to go to. And then I've gone to State Congress. Last year was my first year. That was, it was really neat um, to go down there and just go with a whole state of kids. And I met so many people and it's just really cool. It was a cool experience to be on Mizzou's campus and go to different classrooms and everything and so that's what I liked and then the state fair I go to every year um, no matter if I have a 4-H demonstration that goes to state um, that's really cool to do there in the 4-H building and then I've always shoved livestock at the state fair um, I've been nominated I guess would be the word to go to the state public speaking but I've ended up I haven't gone to that um, yet I just it's kind of not my um, time frame to go to and stuff. I'm always, that month is always jam packed with different um, events, but that's all the states for each things I believe that I've gone to. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's what I've done over the years. And I've gone back to every single one and, until I'm out of the time frame or, uh, or age frame and stuff. And it's just, they're all cool. They all you learn different things. I've always taken back um, a different uh, experience every year. And they always do community service projects there. And just like at 4-H camp, we did the dog toys this past year. And then I brought that back to my club, and we did the dog toys as a 4-H community service project for Gower, and then took it to our dog shelter. And um, so it's just that's really cool too. You know, always take it back to your county and, or your club and that's just kind of what I tell my kids. You go to these, you bring something back. Like that's your one goal from this 4-H club is to do that. Do you meet any new people while you're down there and that you stay in contact with? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And the older I got, um, you know, I got a phone and then like I got all the social media and stuff in middle school. And so that's really cool. You can, um, you know, we have each other on social media and we talk almost every day and stuff because they're just, it's a good group of kids that I've met and stuff. And it's just uh, for sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm at a, at a state shooting sports. I was right next to a kid who had lived um, down like eight hours from where I lived. And I was just a whole, it was a, it was a really cool experience and stuff. And You know, you can meet kids that live in the next County over and you've never seen them in your life, or you meet kids who live eight hours away and stuff. And, it's just super cool and it's another thing you can like if you sign up for an event and maybe it's in a hotel room and you need like a partner you like text them and be like hey go to this event let's room together and that's really cool too i've done that in years past with different things and it says oh yeah you i mean if you don't meet somebody at a forage event you're doing something wrong because i mean you you always meet somebody there yeah, that's always making connections is always one thing that we try to, you know, tell the kids is go meet new people. And a lot of times, you know, you'll have some of the kids who are uh, shy and more on the quiet side. Right. Yeah. And by the end of the weekend, they've they've buddied up with someone and met some new people and, and had a really good time. And then they've got friends to look forward to the next year. For sure. Yeah. So talk about the leadership group that you're part of here in Clinton, here in Clinton County. So. It started about a year ago. I think last year was our first um, go of it. And it was, it's about 
10, 15 kids, um, teenage kids in Clinton County. And we have two leaders, Deanna Matthews and Gina Carlton. And we meet um, every couple months, I think. And we just do different things. Um, we, one of our first things was uh, we took down the voting booths in Clinton County and uh, brought them back to Plattsburgh and stuff and just helped the well, the ladies there and just uh, we took those down and so that was one of our first projects uh, and then we were supposed to we did an amazing race for Clinton County that was really cool we got the whole county involved with that and we had different uh, things around the youth building and the fairgrounds and they were in groups and they had to go to all these different uh, stations and complete the task at hand and so that was really cool there's a lot of gross um stations that got you dirty and so some kids didn't like that but it was really cool and that's one thing we've done and then the trip that the 4-h has in washington dc we're looking to go to that as a group and so that's another thing that we're kind of hoping to go to and stuff and we know people that um, are former 4-hers who have gone or um, some of my friends have gone to it and they really like it and so that's just kind of what we've done and this year uh, we're planning some other things that are in the works and um, I can't think of those things right now but I know we're planning those and um, Deanna and Gina are working hard on all that so it's just it's kind of cool you know we're last year was our first year and so we're just kind of taking it step by step this year and kind of just rocking and rolling. It's awesome sounds like a good experience. For sure, yeah. Well, do you have anything else? Because I'm out of questions. No, just, no, I don't. <laughs> Going back to your pigs? Yeah, I'm supposed to go walk those. All right, well, I will let you go. Thanks for coming right. on and being a guest, and I will get this up as soon as I can. Cool, sounds good. Thank you, and have a good rest of your day. Yep, you too.